All right, good morning. This is Julie Hibben at IDPH. I want to welcome you to our action planning webinar. And this is really hopefully to help all of you prepare for the RFA that's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. And so we know that there were some struggles with creating some outcomes and really thinking about some next steps. And so we're hoping this webinar can help with, with some of that. Um, our presenter this morning is Claire Jones. She's our training consultant for our project. And uh, so I know you're all familiar with her. And just a couple quick reminders, please make sure, I think everybody's done this, but just mute your, your line uh, during our whole entire um, time together today. And that's just to make sure we cut down on background noise as much as possible. Also to let you know that the meeting is being recorded and we will post the link to the workstation after our time together today. And then if you have any questions throughout our, our presentation, feel free to utilize the chat box that's on the right hand uh, side of your screen or that I clear up, we'll probably be taking questions throughout today and you can certainly unmute yourself and ask that way. So I will um, go ahead and turn it over to Claire. Thanks. Thanks, Julie. Um, good morning, everybody. So um, Julie and I were talking, um, like she said in the introduction, just about what maybe we could do to um, offer you some assistance on the front end this year as far as um, getting some advice from each other and doing some brainstorming with us, thinking about, um, kind of, you know, really what I was thinking about doing this is sort of where's that sweet spot with your action plan, you know, too many steps sometimes can make it really cumbersome or make it seem like you haven't gotten everything done that you intended to do when really you're making great progress. Too few steps, I think, sometimes can make it challenging because um, your action plan is such a great tool for accountability with your partners and for sharing what you're doing with others. And so, um, including some more specific things that we're going to talk about as we go on as far as making sure your capacity building is helping happening and and making sure you're on top of who's doing your fidelity things and stuff like that can be really really helpful and so just wanted to kind of talk together today how how you guys find that that sweet spot to make your action plan a really usable tool as well as um, uh, making it if yourselves accountable to, to your IDPH as your funder. So before we start, I just wanted to take a few minutes to ask what, what questions do you guys have? You know, when you saw that we were having an action planning webinar today or when you guys were talking on your last coordinator call about action planning, what are the questions that you have that you want to make sure that we talk about today? And feel free to um, type them in the chat or to uh, unmute yourself. We don't have to go in any particular order. Well, let's go down the list from from um, from my end then maybe. And if you want to pass or if you want to say you just got on to listen, that's totally fine too. But I really um, want to make sure that I hear from everybody in the beginning so that we're really tailoring this to meet your needs. So on my list, Carol, I have you. I have you first. <clears throat> okay. Um, I guess I am hoping to get a better idea of you know we say uh, action plans are supposed to get you closer to your long-term outcome but to me that's really vague because okay, um, you could see that in a lot of ways so yeah okay that's really helpful thank you I will definitely make sure we talk about that um, Jody good morning everybody um, I guess I have to um, look at short-term outcomes, and Mickey had put that in the chat box too, but that's, that's what I'm really excited to learn more about is how to write some more effective short-term outcomes. Okay, great. We're going to spend a, a fair amount of time um, in the second half of the, most of the call doing that, so uh, absolutely. Um, I see that Chris uh, said that also as far as uh, writing better short-term outcomes. 
Um, how about Max? Anything specific, Max? Good morning. I guess morning. Um, I must struggle a little in the wording of my outcomes to make them, yeah, I just want to learn how to word them correctly to make them effective. Great, okay, thank you. Um, I see that Mickey also said, uh, write better short-term outcomes. And um, let's see, Rachel says, general information, because this will be her first time uh, doing this, so thanks for sharing that, Rachel. Anybody else that I didn't, that I didn't catch? Okay, great. And so tell me, um, tell me really, let's, let's go through one more, uh, one more time really quickly. And I would love it if everybody is able to tell me one thing that was helpful with having your action plan this year. One thing that you saw is a success that was like, I used it for this and it was great. It kept me on track or whatever it might be. And one thing that was really a challenge for you and they can be, they can be really brief. Um, or they can be longer if it's something that you really want to make sure that we that we get into today. So I'll just I'll just go through the list real quick, and um, again, feel free to to just shout it out or to type it in the chat box. So Carol, uh, a, a a quick success and a challenge still. Okay, um, one success was. Uh, yeah, just it's a good way to stay on track and and know what you need to do. Okay. Um, and then a challenge. We ran into a few different ones. Um, some of them related to num, you know, selecting baseline numbers and things like that. Um, but some we also, I would say, the biggest challenge was just writing these short-term outcomes without knowing what we were really capable of doing in a year so okay yeah. so is that something that you okay. see already being less of a challenge going into this next year now that you've kind of have your footing a little bit um yes but this was one thing that we was brought up on our our coordinator call was just with the the, the strategies related to policy change Mm -hmm. um, it's challenging to know what is a realistic achievement for a, a year less than a okay. year. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks, Carol. Um, Jody, success and a challenge with your action plan. I have to agree with Carol. Sometimes I, would, I look back on my action plan and I think, wow, is that realistic or not? You know, to get accomplished in a year. And so I guess short-term outcomes have been current successes and challenges depending upon the sector I have that I'm working with and dependent upon. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Chris. I'm trying to get to the right button to unmute myself. Sorry. <laughs> it happens to me all the time, and usually I'm the one facilitating. <laughs> there you go. So um, success-wise, is it, it's just nice to have something laid out that I can look at that keeps us accountable as a coalition, and that I can share with the coalition members so they know where we're at and what we need to accomplish. Um, the struggle for us this year really was our light, our um, social host and who would have known our county attorney would have blown us up the way he did. Mm. So being able maybe to be better prepared <laughs> in writing those short-term action steps or action goals so that something like that doesn't end up blowing everything up on us. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Max. Well, I think um, on my action plan, I did pretty well as spacing things out, you know, so I learned from Spiff Sig not to get too aggressive right off the bat, but um, I think the, the, the short-term outcomes was my biggest challenge. Okay, thank you. Mickey. I think my success and challenge is kind of sort of the same. Um, I think I had too many action steps, so I needed to 
it was nice because then that broke everything out to this is exactly what I need to do. But at the same time, it made it hard for um, reporting purposes when I was doing all of that because then I ended up having too many for the template. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to put some of them together. So just making it so that they're a little bit more concise or you know, kind of put some of them together. Okay, that's good advice, thank you. Rachel. I would say that I would agree with everyone else on that the action step is a way to um, keep us accountable. Um, and as far as the challenge, I would say that occasionally I would struggle with it being fixated on the dates. And so if I didn't get something completed or having to remember that there wasn't a coordinator and so things aren't going to necessarily be on track mm -hmm. I mean, about not getting fixated on dates that things might not be completed at that time yes yeah and i julie correct me if i'm wrong but i i feel like the way that we've looked at action action plans for this project and and for some other idph projects is um, obviously, the date that's that's set for your short-term outcome and the date that's set for your long-term outcome as far as being at the end of the fiscal year and the end of the project, you have to um, meet your outcomes at that at that point. But the the date range that's within the plan itself is definitely more for your own um, kind of planning out your year and timelining and thinking about a natural progression of, you know, well, this has to happen first. And so if that happens by September, then we're hoping this next thing can happen. You know, we're planning this next thing will happen by December. Um, so the date that's in the middle of your plan is definitely much more, um, flexible. And in fact, you know, one of the things that, that I really think can help um, help you be successful, and I'm sure you guys do this already, is to be going back and looking at your action plan, you know, really consistently and also pulling it out with your, with your coalition or with your subcommittee members and looking at really consistently. And that may be something that you actually want to frequently be kind of looking at and discussing and saying, you know, okay, we said we were going to get all these things done by December 1st, and here we are, um, November 1st, do we still think that's realistic? And if we can see that, you know, because something has happened or that's not really quite right on track where we are, um, do we want to, you know, look now at this and say, okay, we, we think this is more likely to actually happen now in January after the holidays. And if that's the case, then the next three things that we have listed after that really aren't going to happen until February. And to be really consistently kind of looking at that timeline and, and looking forward and then also looking back from the end of the fiscal year to say, if this gets bumped back a month, how does that look for us as we move all the way through the year until um, we get to the end of December or September. Um, would you agree, Julie, that that's the way you guys look at it also? Yes, I'm not, it, within the, the action plans itself, I'm, I'm not as concerned about the time frames necessarily because yes, there are gonna be things that happen, things shift in your project. If there's some major changes, then I would just expect that you would contact myself or Janet and we would work with you on that. But Claire, you're exactly right. Okay, great. All right, thank you. That was such a, that was a really, um, thanks for throwing that out there, Rachel. So um, you guys really know this. This is kind of basic action planning um, as far as, you know, why we're even spending all this time talking about it, why do it, um, and, and obviously the accountability. Um, I see two kinds of accountability with it. Um, with your funder, obviously you have to do it you know, first and foremost, we have to do it because IDPH says we have to do it because it's part of your grant funding. And so, um, you know, that just is what it is. But, um, but also that um, it's such a great tool for accountability. I wrote with partners, but I think for yourself as well. I mean, I know when I was um, doing uh, more direct service work, I was for, I'm sure you guys too. I mean, my action plan was so dog-eared you know, I was forever um, highlighting it and making notes on it and writing, you know, if I had to do um, three policy changes, I was, you know, right every time we got one, I'm checking it off and changing it to two. And I'm, um, you know, really used it pretty frequently for myself, as well as, you know, like I said, keeping it really at the forefront 
with your coalition and with your partners that are helping you carry out implementation and evaluation and all of those things so that um, it's just such a it's such a great way as a roadmap to make sure that you're that you're on track um, helps you break those large tasks into man manageable pieces and I think we've had some great points already um, and and can talk a little more too about you know again just finding that sweet spot of um, passing social host in a county is such a huge you know I I um, I was thinking, okay, what would be a good picture to throw on this slide? You know, let's find somebody uh, looking up at a mountain. And when I saw the picture of this, uh, this gentleman here looking up at this sheer rock face, I thought, yep, that's what community change looks like sometimes. Um, and how do you kind of break that into smaller pieces? In fact, I, I didn't click on it, but I saw a story the other day that said something about someone who just free climbed this huge um, mountain that some people didn't think it could be done and he said the first that he started the first step by taking off his shoes and just sort of taking the first step and standing on the edge of it um, and I thought that is a great metaphor for uh, getting started with community change shared vision again keeps everybody on the same page um, I find you know depending on you know we've talked about shared outcomes and, and building capacity and and I find that an action plan is also even sometimes a great tool for folks that also like to kind of think and speak in this language as far as um, sharing it with someone at the school district or sharing it with someone um, maybe who's an elected official, you know, folks that are that are also kind of used to thinking in steps and outcomes and accountability and saying, you know, this is our plan and, and it's solid and it's well thought out and here are all the smaller steps that are going to get us to this big change and here's where I see you fitting in and so your action plan can be a great tool for that as well. Um, anything else that you guys can think of? Any, any reason why... Um, this is helpful or important to do in addition to what we've all said already this morning. I, I think it's important because we can now lose some of our money if we don't. Yes. Our outcomes. Yep. Nope. You're right. And that, that's that funder piece. Sorry, I, mean, I, I had to say it. <laughs> No, I appreciate that. And in fact, it, I, we saved that. It's on a slide near the end of the presentation, um, I believe. But um, no, you're absolutely right. And I think, um, I, I think you're right. And that's part of that piece of, you know, part of this is we have to do it and we have to do it well because we have to be accountable for the funding that we're receiving. And so um, it's a great point. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else? All right, so I would definitely encourage all of you, you know, it's such a great opportunity as you're heading into the next fiscal year to, um, before you even, um, you know, pick up your pen or, you know, sit at your laptop with your coalition members to start um, thinking about how you're going to plan out the next year, I, I want you to, to take a break and to make sure that you're going back to the guiding documents for your project. I think sometimes when we get into year two or year three or we get further along in a grant, we kind of lose our our vision a little bit or because maybe coordinators have changed or things have happened, we lose some of that historical memory also. And so I really encourage you to start by looking through your guiding documents for your project if you haven't done that very recently. You know, pull out your call, definitely pull out your strategic plan, pull out your capacity workbook, which you're going to have out um, anyway, um, and, and looking at, at, at who's missing and who you're, who you're adding and all those things, and definitely have all of that fresh in your mind as far as, you know, here's where we came from and why we're doing this, here's what we're thinking about our theory of change and, and our logic model and, and why we're going where we're going, and then use that information to help you then plan ahead for this year. I think that fits in also, um, you know, I think it was Carol who um, brought up that, that one of the challenges is that this, that your action plan is really intended as a, is a visual representation and your logic model as well to get you to your long-term outcome. At the end of the project, what you're being asked to do is to make that longer-term change in the priority problem. And so, 
um, I think revisiting your strategic plan especially can help you say, okay, but, so what exactly is it we're trying to change and, and how, how is it we're going to get there and then use that to create your short-term outcomes. Again, you know, thinking a couple of years ahead, if, if where we want to be is, um, you know, so many youth have been impacted by this um, this program or this policy change is going to impact so many people or, um, you know, this percent of people are going to have received training or be checking IDs or passing compliance checks or whatever it is, you know, looking ahead at that long-term outcome and then breaking it into smaller pieces. So this year, if we reach this many and next year, if we reach this many, um, that can help you kind of think of how to use, use this in a useful way to get you there. Um, and everything really should be aligning to reach your long-term goals. And so all of those, you know, all the things that you're putting in your steps and all the things that you're putting in your short-term outcomes are all things that should ultimately be building to get you to your long-term outcome. <clears throat> so we've, we've talked uh, about um, some of this already. Um, does anybody have, uh, you know, from experience on this project or from just from this last year even, does anybody have any advice that they would give for how you have found that sweet spot for, for your action steps as far as not too many, not too few? I think um, Mickey um, brought up an interesting point that I was actually not aware of as far as, um, Mickey, when you were talking about the reporting template trying to fit all the action steps in, are you talking about the actual, are you, are you talking about one of your required reportings or your, um, which reporting were you talking about? Yeah, for the, the quarterly report, we have to do the action steps also. Um, you so have basically to put our yeah. action plan into the template or whatever. Okay. And there's only, I believe it's like 15 spots, I want to say, per strategy. Okay. And there was a couple of my strategies that had more than that, so we had to kind of combine. And it, it worked out okay because some of the, the steps, now looking back at it, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I do that same thing at a meeting, like with community event organizers. So when I go and talk to them, I'm always talking to them about the 20 best practices. So that kind of goes along with talking about, you know, suggestions made by the Collaboration Council for um, policy change or implementing a new policy or whatever. So some of them I had broken out into separate steps which was helpful for me because then it was, okay, did I do this thing? Did I do this thing? But then when I went to report on it, I had done those things and I did them at the same meeting. Right. So I could have really put, in a, put them into a one step. So do you think it was helpful for you to have them broken out <clears throat> to start with? So like I hear you saying that maybe it was helpful to have them broken out so you remembered to do them, especially as you were maybe first going into things, but that you were able to combine them in a way. Um, I get nervous when you when we start talking about combining things, and, and one of the things that we'll talk about in short-term outcomes is making sure you're not using the word and, because sometimes then if you do the first half but not the second half, then you, you haven't met it at all instead of dividing it into two and saying, well, we did do this one, but we didn't do this one, um, or just finding one that that is a good fit for what you're doing, and then you, and then you can meet it. Um, so it sounds, it sounds like it worked well for you to, to do it both ways, to have them longer, but then combine them. Yes. Okay. Did anybody else run into this? Or Julie, do you have any thoughts about, about as we're, because as we're talking through this, I want to make sure that, that they'll be able to carry it all the way through their, their reporting and, and it's, it's going to be useful and not cumbersome for them. And Mickey, you're talking about 
your action steps, not your short-term outcomes. Is that correct? Yes, it was the action steps that I had. I think there was mm -hmm. like two of my different strategies that had like 18 steps. Mm -hmm. So I had to so, combine a couple of them. Yeah, and that's fine. As long as it, it makes sense to put them together. And um, I, I know that can be challenging because there are other steps that you probably all do that are maybe a part of a step that you have within the, the, the action plan itself. And so when we were giving you directions on creating that action plan, we said, you know, really be thinking about the steps that are kind of the most relevant and um, that there may be some services you provide under those specific steps that aren't necessarily exactly listed. So how you write those, as long as it makes sense, I, I think that's fine. Does anybody else have a, a thought about that as far as finding that middle ground? Let me let me uh, go move ahead one uh, slide here. One of the things that that when I when I looked at when I looked at plans and I and I helped Julie a little bit um, do some initial review as she was going through all the plans in the um, fall from last year. You know, one of the things that I think about when we talk about kind of finding that sweet spot <clears throat> is whether it's in your action plan or it's somewhere else, making sure that you have some specific steps as far as um, uh, these kinds of tasks. And so um, thinking about building capacity, you know, are you including that somewhere? And maybe for you, the best fit is to um, be specific in your action plan and saying, we are going to revisit our capacity workbook every six months or to put something specific in your action plan that says, you know, we are going to recruit um, three needed partners according to our capacity workbook. And so I think sometimes having too few or being a little more open-ended as far as um, we'll create a capacity plan doesn't necessarily um, give you the same account the same amount of accountability or the same amount of specifics that really um, help you kind of hold your own feet to the fire in terms of making sure that you then follow through with that happening. I think though you can then get kind of stuck again in having way too many. You know, you, you don't necessarily want your action plan to be the place that says, um, we need, you know, two new partners from healthcare and Mary Jones is going to make the phone call to invite somebody to our next meeting and um, we're going to have the youth coordinator bring, bring this to their youth group. Um, you know, you want to more kind of make sure that there's something in your plan that's triggering you to say, yes, we do have to go back and pull out that capacity workbook and look through it every six months and make sure that we're, um, that we're following through on the thing, you know, the areas that we said that we needed to work on so that we're continually building our capacity. Um, carrying out your implementation tasks, you know, it's the, it's the same for that, you know, um, it may be that you want to just make sure that you're saying, um, we're going to check in every month with the subcommittee that is responsible for this strategy, and we're going to ensure that they are looking at um, the best practice guidance document that goes with it. And so in, you may not in your plan need to have every specific thing that that subcommittee is going to do, but you want to make sure that what you have in there is um, – is a reminder for yourself to say, we have to look at this, we have to do this, we have to make sure we went, um, we went and took care of this, and who's responsible for those things, so that you can feel like, so that you know that you're checking them off as you go along. Same with ensuring fidelity. Um, this one seems like it's it's been a little bit of a, a frustration or a struggle or an area that maybe everybody wasn't quite as sure about going into this year. It's definitely something that I think is a little newer for us at Iowa thinking about as far as um, the level that we're we're doing it with the implementation for this project. And so you may want to consider for next year instead of um, you know something that's that's more uh, general as far as you know we'll complete fidelity checks 
we'll use the checklist, you know, whatever it might be, you might want to have one or two steps that are more specific that are just a good trigger for yourself to say, um, you know, here's the person that's going to be responsible and we're going to revisit that where, you know, fidelity checks are happening every four months or um, fidelity uh, focus groups are going to happen or there will be um, an in-person observation in the classroom at least every other month or whatever it might be. I, I think that, that, that you will know best what works well as far as too many and too few for your specific partners. Um, to know how detailed you want to put it into your plan to make sure that it's happening. But I, I think being a little bit more specific can be really helpful. Um, I, I know a lot of us, um, this is going back to implementation for a minute, but I know a lot of us that, that work with law enforcement, for example, have found that it's really helpful to, to sometimes break things into smaller tasks and timelines because they they're a, a partner that tends sometimes to be understaffed. Um, they, uh, you know, I know that they're a very willing partner, but sometimes when they have a whole bunch of um, compliance checks or other things that they've agreed to do, it might end up getting, you know, put off a little bit. And so, you know, that's another place to say, let's make sure that this many happen in this month and this many happen in this quarter or that we're having, you know, periodic follow-up meetings or whatever it might be. Putting some of that right into your action plan is a great way to ensure that it's happening on a regular basis. Um, planning for sustainability. Again, this is another one, you know, like thinking about capacity, thinking about um, even a little bit about fidelity. You're going to have a separate sustainability plan and it's gonna be something that you're, that you're working on its own. But having a prompt for yourself within your action plan can be a great way to just make sure that it is first and foremost um, on your agenda all the time as you're moving through things. And so, um, again, I encourage you to think beyond maybe including something that says, um, we'll plan for sustainability, we'll work on our plan, to really think about um, maybe putting some steps even in your action plan as far as we're going to, you know, have a subcommittee meet about this every quarter, or we're going to um, <clears throat> ensure that we have two new partners on board that will support our sustainability. Just thinking about um, not duplicating things, but I, I see your action plan, and, and you guys jump in if you see it differently, or, or Julie, if this isn't how you see it, but I just really see it as more your day the way to create your day-to-day, -day, you know, marching orders for yourself and for your coalition members. And so for me, I don't want to overburden it with too many steps, but I definitely benefit from having those reminders of, oh, I, I do need to remember to pull out my capacity plan and see where we're at with that. Otherwise, that might kind of sit on my desk collecting dust until IDPH says, hey, remember that document? We need you to review it again this year. Um, the same for sustainability planning. I know we all talk about sustainability and we know it's important, but sometimes it can get kind of put to the back burner in the day-to-day -day of um, working through implementation. And so I think having a step in your action plan that says, don't forget this is something that you need to consistently be working at and building your capacity for is a great way to make sure that you're, that you're consistently chipping away at it. And then the last one I have on here um, is media advocacy. Again, I, I would encourage you to think about how you can really be leveraging this for your project. I think a lot of action plans, um, and, and which makes sense going into this, this last year, that um, not everybody even, I think, kind of knew what this would look like, or, or I hear folks saying, and I agree, that you know, you're just sort of still getting to know your partners and your coalition and, and your community and what everybody's capable of and, and what pace things are going to be moving at. Um, so I think this year is a great opportunity now to be able to be a little more detailed in saying um, beyond we'll use media advocacy for this or we'll make sure we have three um, press releases or whatever it might be, to be a little bit more detailed in saying either we're going to create a, a a media advocacy plan for this strategy and then that connects to a separate document where you really have it outlined as far as you know how many people are we going to pull in and have creating a buzz on social media about this and and who are the people in our community that um, 
that are really media savvy or end up getting their letters to the editor published or, or whatever those things are that really make your media successful, you can put some reminders in here to connect that with a separate plan, which I think can be a great way to really be um, able to think through your specific media approach for each of your strategies. Um, or you also can put um, a couple of steps in here as far as being more specific. You know, we're going to um, we're going to make sure that once a month uh, something gets posted on social media about about the strategy. Because again, for me, I know that some of that stuff kind of gets could get lost in the weeds. And if I have it in my action plan, I will make sure that it happens and I'll make sure that I'm going through checking it off. And, and all of those things really do then lead to your long-term success because making sure that you're doing um, all of these things consistently, it, it's that whole you know idea with SPIF of the more you can drill things down, the more you can really get to the heart of you know, whose capacity do we need and, and how are we best going to target our media to reach our folks and, and what do we need to do to make sure fidelity is happening and all of those things will get you to that long-term outcome that you're looking for. So <clears throat> let me come up for air for a minute here and see um, anybody have any questions or at this point or want to um, comment about any of that or is there anything that you think I've missed that should be included as far as your, your steps and your plan itself? Okay, so we're going to um, do a quick review of short-term outcomes, and then we're going to spend about um, 10, 10 or more minutes uh, doing some practice so everybody can kind of, we can kind of all get on the same page with what might be helpful here. So um, talked about this already, bring your closer to long-term goal. Make sure that your short-term outcome contains only one measurable item. Again, I think this is where sometimes we get into trouble when there's, an and um, or when there's um, something that is a little more open for interpretation and so the more specific and measurable you can be in saying exactly what it is you're going to do the more likely you are to be able to meet it um, <clears throat> you are Julie they're still expected to have two per strategy yes Correct, yes. Okay. And um, you want them to be smart, which uh, I, I realize this slide is a little bit busy, but I wanted uh, to be a little more specific thinking about what this means for this plan in particular. And so your outcomes should be specific, um, exactly who it is you're talking about, um, measurable, again, um, measurable, and specific means any person should be able to look at what you're saying you're going to do and tell you whether it was done or not. Um, achievable, that you guys are, are right on target, saying this is, this is the part that, that sometimes you have to figure out. You know, can we get this done in a year? Is it too much? Is it too little? Um, you know, let's really sit down with the coalition and with our partners and say, we want to get as much accomplished as we can. We want to make the most difference with this funding, um, but we don't want to bite off more than we can chew because we want to be able to get done what we say we're going to get done. And we also want to be able to be accountable to our funder because we certainly, you know, don't want a disincentive. We don't want to not be, um, doing the things we said we're going to be doing. So making sure that this is something you really can do within your time frame. Um, is it realistic and does it have an impact on what you're trying to do? I think um, making sure that your short-term outcome really reflects something that is very closely connected with getting you to that long-term outcome. You know, saying that you're going to have, um, just saying that you're going to have three press releases doesn't necessarily really show the connection to how that's going to get you to passing a social host policy in your county. And so what would be a better fit as far as, um, you know, awareness of the issue or people taking action on the issue or um, getting some uh, commitments or getting a draft written or all of those things? You know, what, what can you look at that really set, that really shows if we do this, we're, we're getting one step closer to our long-term outcome. 
and then time bound um, just being specific and when it's going to happen and um, and so for this project having a specific month and uh, date and and obviously the year um, is helpful to to help because you're planning just a year at a time uh, it's just a helpful way to break it into increments um, and again I just think about the fact that uh, your outcome should be able to stand alone. And so, you know, I would even suggest after you write it, um, really your, your plan in general, but after you write it, you know, showing it to someone else in your office, showing it to someone in your coalition. Um, I used to like to show stuff to my husband sometimes because he was somebody that wasn't uh, connected with prevention in any way. And I would say, um, if you looked at this, does this make sense to you? Do, <coughs> could you see what this means? Would you be able to see if we had got this done or not? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's, um, anybody have anything, um, anybody have anything they want to add about any of that? Let's see if I can bring this screen up to share here. Oops. Mm. Can you guys see my um, practice example screen here now? Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's uh, let's practice with one. Anybody want to be a guinea pig and throw one out there maybe that was a little bit of trouble for you this year that you want to try to reword a little bit or one that you're thinking ahead might be helpful? And for some reason, Julie, if you can give me a hand, um, now that I've pulled up the Word document, it won't show the chat box at the same time. Oh, wait, no, I got it. I got it. Okay. You can still give me a long, oh, no, every time, sorry, every time I click on the Word document to type something, the chat That's, disappears. So let me know if something pops up yep, there. I, I can do that. Okay, so somebody throw out an example. Are you thinking of a long term or short? Oh, sorry. I believe your long term outcomes, I think, already have to stand the way they are, unless you have some uh, concerns about meeting them or after this, you're thinking, oh, maybe I need to look at that. Um, you want to talk separately with Julie about that because I, I, your long term outcomes, um, I, I think, are already set for the project. So I'm thinking short term outcomes. So if it's one from this year that you think, oh, it would be interesting to know, you know, or last year that it didn't work, what would it look like? Um, maybe how could it have been tweaked? Or if you want to think ahead to next year, you know, you're going to have to write a short-term outcome um, about something. Do you have an idea, Carol? Um, I was just thinking, you had said something about your short-term outcomes are supposed to be more action-based, correct? So, like you said, like a media advocacy wouldn't work. No, no, I was talking about action steps at that point. Or yeah, so, yeah so, but sorry, okay. you said your short-term outcomes are more like, oh, at, you know, we they, I keep hearing they need to get you closer to your long term, but we also hear that our action steps all contribute to our long term. So as far as like the difference between your short term outcomes getting you, are those supposed to be like, you know, how would you how would you explain the difference between a short term outcome and something that would be more of an action step? Oh, thank you. That is a great question. And I apologize if I um, sort of talked around it, around that in circles this morning. So your, um, your action steps, and, and I don't have a template in front of me, which I should, so I'm sorry for that. So think about down the left side of your plan as far as where all your action steps are written. Those, it, it's, I almost see it like when you sort of think of that visual of your logic model, your action steps should be leading to your short-term outcomes and your short-term outcomes are leading to your 
long-term outcomes. And, and you're right. I, 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 as you, as you kept on saying it, I thought, yep, that actually does capture what I said. You're, your short-term outcomes should should be action-oriented. You know, they really should be specific things that are that you're that are building to your long-term outcome and showing change. You know, they should be things that are showing, you know, this big thing has happened, this behavior has changed, this um, this perception has changed, this. Um, you know, thinking about complying its checks, this, this percent has changed as far as, you know, um, changing how many people are in compliance or how many people are doing this new action or behavior as a result of what we've done. So when you're thinking about your action steps, you can say, well, what will get us there? What will, you know, so, so writing three press releases is a great action step as far as, um, you know, your intent is to raise awareness, and so you're going to make sure that there's three press releases that happen each year. But when you're thinking about short-term outcomes are showing how you capture that or how you've measured that what you're doing is getting you to the long-term goal. And so telling me that you wrote, telling me that you wrote three press releases doesn't tell me how you've ch made an impact with that or change the behavior. So writing three press releases is, is a fine action step, but as a short-term outcome, I want to know what happened as a result of that. I want to know that when you went and did a focus group, 50% um, of the people you talk to are now aware that um, social host is an issue in your county. Or I want to know that, um, you know, as a result of the seeing those three press releases and one-on-one -on -one conversations that you had and um, going and meeting with your retailers that you now have, uh, that in your short-term outcome, you're going to have um, five retailers agree to have shoulder tap operations happen in their parking lot. Does, does that make sense? Yes, that that does. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. No, I'm so glad that you at thank you. Thank, I appreciate and I know it's hard on these calls sometimes, even though you guys all know each other and we've been doing this a while. I, I know it's hard sometimes to sort of throw yourself out there and ask a question. And so I I I that was such a good question. I really appreciate it. Julie, do you want to add anything to that or do you feel like that captures what you're looking for? Oh, I, th I think that makes sense. And I, I, I know it is challenging to figure out what the best short term outcomes are. So and we'll, we'll talk about some possible options towards the end of the webinar today. Thank you. And my thought with doing a practice example was it might be nice to kind of work one through together. If that's challenging to do because everyone's working on different things, then then we could use this this time for questions as well. You you guys tell me what's most helpful for you. Would you like to work through a practice? Do you want to spend? Um, I'm going to leave Julie a few minutes at the end, so I would say we have, you know, three to five minutes here. Um, you guys tell me, do you want to do an example that somebody has, or do you want to ask a few more questions, or do you want to just move on to what Julie has to say and then see if we have any time left at the end? You tell me. And the squeaky wheel gets the greasier. Why don't we let Julie talk? Great. Thank you very much. Julie, I will pull up the PowerPoint and send it back to you. Okay. So I'll let Claire pull that up first. All right. So I, I know this was a struggle over the past year, and I, I know Janet and I tried to provide some technical assistance on creating short-term outcomes. Everybody's situation is different. Everyone is doing a variety of, of strategies. We have a variety of strategies we funded. So 
just want to let you know, Claire is providing some counties right now with some technical assistance. And so she is available to, if you're really struggling with a short-term outcome and you really aren't sure the direction to go, she can certainly work with you. And I just ask that you, if you, when you reach out to her, you just CC me so I'm in the loop. Um, and I believe that most of you should have her email, but maybe we'll post something on the workstation again, just to remind everybody, because not everyone's on this call today. So you can certainly reach out to me too, but if you'd like to kind of do some specific kind of talking through with someone, Claire is available. So, and she's done this work uh, for a long time and has a lot of good experience that we can lean on. So just to let you know that. And then uh, we have been talking about the RFA being available to all of you. We've got a couple of state grants that we're focused on right now to try to get out the door because the due date is the end of this month. We want to get contracts done. So that's kind of taking up a lot of my time right now. But the RFA should be out to you within a month. Um, there will be the expectation, it'll be similar to last year, that you will have an action plan or work plan to create, and we'll want you to keep with the same long-term outcomes, but then you will be creating new short-term outcomes. And so uh, we'll be reviewing those, we'll be giving you some expectations about that, because I know people are very concerned. This past year, there was a performance measure connected to short-term outcome performance, and I, I know there's some counties that are very um, worried about that or nervous that they may not meet all of those or had unexpected things happening and just know that we haven't formally decided what the performance measure is going to be for this RFA yet but IDPH is going in the direction of disincentives and it's just a way for us to hold you all accountable for the services when we when you give us your work plan you're really providing us with a list of services that you're going to do uh, for the funding that we provide to you and so it's it, it is important that we hold our providers accountable to that we understand that sometimes things happen that are out of your control I, I do understand that that's the challenge and prevention a lot of times but we are paying you money to make sure that these strategies occur. Um, I will say too that we really want to make sure that next year the strategies are fully implemented. There are some counties that are not serving participants and in individual strategies specifically yet, and that is a huge concern. So all of your strategies will need to be fully implemented in the schools that you are working with, um, engaging participants, and, um, and if you are struggling, I know there's a couple counties that need some more training on um, the administrative penalty strategy. We are working and providing that to you this summer and we'll be in touch with you about that. But if there's barriers that you're facing, please contact me and I'll work with you. But we, we really wanna make sure everybody's doing their strategies as, as fully as they can be. Um, and to piggyback on that, um, if you are working with a school and there has been some um, kind of not um, being very sure about implementation or you're spending a lot of money to get teachers trained, it's really important that you get some kind of commitment from the administration. Don't just work with a teacher or an instructor or one specific person because that person could leave the uh, organization or there may be something that happens and they just decide not to do the program and then you're stuck with outcomes that you can't reach and you're also stuck to provide them with, with additional training that is hugely expensive. So please make sure that you get commitments from leadership with the schools and we're not gonna necessarily, there, there may be some counties that we ask for some kind of formal documentation if there's been struggles this year, but if you're nervous that a school is gonna back out or something like that, please go to the leadership and get a commitment so it isn't just a teacher making a decision that has happened in some of our counties this year and it's causing delays with with implementation. So that is something for all of you to consider. I'm not asking necessarily for all of you to formally submit something to us, but I may be following up with some specific counties that are having struggles and ask for that documentation. And then I lastly, I'll just let you know that all of our funding is being scrutinized. And that's not only at the state level, but that's at the federal level too. SAMHSA is dealing with some potential cuts to funding and all of our funding is being looked at. And so it's really important that 
we try our best to meet our outcomes and provide the services that we say we're going to provide. So please help us meet those goals. It impacts its ripple effect on all of us. So, and if you're really struggling, I just ask that you contact me and let me know so we can work out some next steps. So, um, so just wanted to let you know some of those things. We're here to help you. Claire's available, I'm available, Janet's available. Um, just reach out and let us know if you need something. And that's all I have. So um, we have we have a couple minutes left. Let's just use that time for um, any questions you have. And so if you have a question about something, a specific outcome, if you have a question about something that Julie has said, anything else in the presentation, and then um, we can leave it that if you would like some help brainstorming some specifics for your outcomes or if you create your outcomes with your um, agency and your coalition and you would love a second uh, look at them before you get them submitted. Um, absolutely feel free to uh, shoot them my way, give me a call, whatever it might be, and I'm happy to, um, to provide technical assistance around that. So anybody have a, a question they want to throw out while we're all together for the last couple minutes here? I have one question for Julie. Is she wanting um, counties who have short-term outcomes that aren't looking like they're going to be met to talk to her or no no if i if if you want to talk through that you certainly can um if um or if there's something that you think we can help you with regarding trying to meet your short-term outcome, but you don't have to necessarily inform us. We will be giving you direction on the final quarter report, the fourth quarter report on reporting your outcomes. And so um, you'll be hearing more from us about how to do that. Okay, thanks. Julie, would you say, um, though, you know, where, where are we at now? We're in June, so we've got a couple of months, three months of implementation left, June, July, August, June, July, well, actually almost four months left still, really. Um, would you say, though, if people have concerns at this point that they may not meet their outcome, that it, I, mean, I just wonder if it couldn't hurt for them to reach out to you or if there's some TA that I can provide as far as, I, I, I just, I, there were some that, that when we looked at plans at the end of last year that weren't met, it seemed like part of it maybe was even how it was written or how it was measured or there may be something that um, if we go, you know, one county and they, they didn't end up deciding to make a change, but one county that I looked at that had some concern with their short term outcome when we went back to kind of talk about the original intent, the, it, it, it was clear that it might make sense to measure something more in terms of how much of a population they were going to reach to make an impact as opposed to how many school districts because it turned out that one of their parochial schools was only reaching like three sixth graders or so um there so there may also be something that you could do as far as you know in, in the end the intent is to get you to your long-term outcome and so if there is a way to look at your strategic plan and say is there a better way to measure this or to show that we're making that progress that's something that we could help with i think we have to be really right. careful though claire um yes. because we have to be careful as far as what we permit uh, being changed sure and so because if if you're just having if you're having challenges and you know you wrote that you're going to be working with um, three uh, community events and one is just not working with you or there's been change in leadership or something's happened and you would rather change your dosage to two we we can't allow that so sure. this is connected to a performance measure and if we permitted somebody to if we permitted one county to do that, we'd have to allow everyone. So it's, I know several of you have reached out asking if you can make changes. And I, if it's something that isn't going to change the actual, um, for instance, somebody contacted me and asked if they could change um, some of the wording because they realized the survey they, they wanted to initially use wasn't the actual survey or the, the wording of the question that was available. And so that wasn't really changing how many youth they'd reach or the percentage of change. And so we permitted that 
we we allowed that. But if it's if it's you want to work with a different group or you want to change the dosage or frequency or um, if it's things like that, we can't permit those changes because it's connected to a performance measure. So we have to be pretty careful about what we're permitting changed. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. I, I think that's I think that was partly what I guess was meaning as far as sort of maybe coming around from a different way. Is, is there a different way to write it to show that you are still getting that frequency and dosage, you're still making a significant change? And so, um, thank you. I apologize if no, I kind okay. of missed, that's okay. It's, misspoke. It's, um, I guess I'm also just saying it can't hurt to run it, to run it by you. If somebody has no, a concern in June, right. then your answer, you know, yep. obviously could be, no, no, that's, that's, that was decided. That's what you agreed on. You know, you just have to keep chipping away at it, but it could also be, um, like you said, with the survey, yeah, there actually probably is an easier or different way to measure that and to write it. And so if you change it to say, um, this instead, that's a more accurate representation of getting the work done you've agreed to do. So I'm sorry, I misspoke. No, that's okay. It's, it's tricky. So So, Carol, I hope we didn't answer your question then on, on answer it and then answer it again, but hopefully that gives you your answer. <laughs> nope, that helps. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Julie, I don't know if you want to wrap things out. Sure. Oh, yes, that's 10.02. I, I can't, we can't hear you, Julie, Sorry, if you're talking. I muted myself. Sorry. So, <laughs> I thought that was a really quick wrap up, Julie, to tell everybody. It was We're done. It's Sorry. 10 or 2. <laughs> uh, so, if you do have questions, if you are, you know, struggling, please reach out to us. Claire is available to assist you. Um, if you, would like us to review any short-term outcomes before you submit them through the RFA. We're more than happy to do that. Just let us know, and um, we'll certainly be informing you as soon as the RFA is available. So just know that we'll keep you in the loop about that. So thank you for participating today. We will have this information listed on the workstation hopefully in the next couple days, and please reach out if you need anything. Thanks, and thanks, Claire. Yeah, thank you.